We also asked Bowen for an example of countries around the world who have a high renewable energy um, grid, but also cheap energy prices. And you said that he rejected the premise of that question too. Is this just That's right. plain that evasion? Look, look, I think so. I think there's a sort of ideological commitment to renewables, particularly wind, solar. Uh, it wasn't my question. It was somebody else's question. But uh, it, it was quite an, a, a reasonable question because, you know, Germany is one of the leaders in renewables and it is having the most problems. Uh, and it's also one of the countries that is also not seriously considering either restarting their nuclear reactors or, or going back to some sort of nuclear energy plan. And if we look at what's happening in Germany, you know, the prices are among, among the highest in the OECD. Now, obviously, the uh, issues with uh, gas and oil and coal and so on th because of the Ukraine war are impacting Germany, but Germany is being impacted much more than other countries that are able to rely on nuclear. And we've seen also in Germany uh, the, the type of coal that they're using, uh, lignite, which is effectively one of the worst kinds of coal to use for carbon emissions, uh, they're actually knocking down wind farms to be able to access some of those natural resources within Germany. So it, it kind of seems really counterproductive. If the actual problem is solving carbon's emissions, and let's not get into the debate of whether we need to or not, if we look at it from a policy point of view that this is what we're trying to achieve, then nuclear has to be uh, in the mix. And I noticed too, uh, Warren Mundine was speaking about this on your program uh, the, the other night as well, uh, saying that if you believe in climate change and you don't believe in nuclear energy, then you don't believe in climate change. And, and I think that's a, a really apt way of putting it. Well, around Europe in particular, are we seeing that countries are having to fall back onto their plan Bs because renewables are not meeting the demand that was promised? Is this a widespread practice now? Look, it, it, it is the case. There is a place for renewables. Uh, you know, I don't think we should be against renewables. They have their place, but I think 100% reliance on them. Or, look, the real problem for Australia is this target of 82%. And Germany is very similar in that they have an 80% target for re renewables energy generation uh, by 2030. And at the rate we're going, it's just not going to happen in Australia. And the, look, my area of research, I'm really interested in networked infrastructure policy and networked infrastructure usually has something that goes into or onto the ground so once it's built it's very hard to unbuild it uh, you've got that sunk cost that you have to deal with and the problem with renewables in australia is very much the same as the nbn the nbn was going to solve everything government was going to do everything and get it all right and we still haven't got it right i mean even here in the country i'm i'm not using nbn i'm using a private provider's solution which is actually superior to the, the government offered uh, solution. And so when we come to energy policy, we're going to have similar problems trying to roll out the uh, the, the carriage network for, for, the, uh, for the electricity because wind and solar needs to be dispersed uh, for two reasons. One, because it's not always sunny and windy in the same location. So dispersion of the assets is, is or having them dispersed is a, is a good idea. But then the problem is you have to get the energy from there to where it's being used. And of course, because of the capacity factors, which effectively means the uh, you have a maximum. So when solar and wind are working at their maximum, you have to build for that maximum. But generally, they're running at about, uh, for wind, about 30%, and for solar, about 25% capacity uh, at any given time. So you're basically overbuilding your infrastructure four times to enable for when it's peaking, and the rest of the time it's sitting there idle. Now, nuclear could... Uh, theoretically could go into the current locations of the power stations that we're shutting down and use the existing infrastructure. So when we start talking about the, the, the cost of building the infrastructure and the delays that are involved, uh, I think much like the NBN, there's, there's a great sort of ray of hope, which is the major part of how this is going to work. And I'm, I'm really concerned about farmers and others who won't be very happy about having these four times overbuilt uh, uh, power lines running through their properties. And I don't think that's going to be as easy to achieve as the government thinks.